Dr. Samantha Smith. I am a home health physical therapist that specializes in knee replacement. So first, I just wanted to start out by mentioning my Facebook group. So it is so, so helpful for those going through this journey and for somebody who's just looking for more information. I am very active in the group um, if you have any questions. And I also do monthly lives in the group. So please, please join. I promise you will not regret it. I will link it in the description below. And then lastly, I have a website available with many detailed articles written by me. So if you're looking for detailed answers on common questions, please visit my website, succeedcourses.com. So now let's get into the topic of the video. What equipment do you really need after a knee replacement? I am a home health physical therapist. So this is definitely like my wheelhouse. I can say there are a few things I definitely recommend after a knee replacement. And then there are many things online that I think are just like marketing gimmicks, in my opinion. Let's start with what you need. I always get the question, do I need the ice machine or can I get away with just ice packs? So this question really, really depends on the person. The ice machine does require some work to get it set up. So if you have somebody helping you in the first two weeks after surgery, this will make this so much easier on you. So first you'll need to fill up the ice machine with water. You put ice in it or those frozen little water bottles and then you have to carry that heavy thing with you to where you're gonna be resting, plug it in, wrap it around your knee and then turn it on. However, once, once you get it filled up with water, you can easily just swap out those frozen water bottles really, really easily. Another thing I've noticed with the ice machines is sometimes they are very cold for people depending on the sensitivity of your knee, you might not like this. On the other hand, there's people that just love how cold it is. It, it really just depends on the person. So now with the ice packs, they're much cheaper. They're much easier to manage and they get the job done in, in my opinion. So they're easy to put on your knee. You can get the small ones. You can get the big ones. You can carry them with you in your car. You can carry them with you easily from to any room in your house. And then with the ice machine, it's a little bit more work to move it from room to room. You really just have to like set it up in one place and not move it. Um, so you kind of see the pros and cons of each of these here. If, if you have the opportunity to get both, uh, I would just do that and kind of see what you end up liking more. Uh, I will link the description in the description below some of the ice packs that I have my patients buy and that I really, really like. And then I'll also link the ice machine that I like the most. And then they're both returnable on Amazon too. So that really helps if you want to return them. So next let's talk about another product that I recommend the portable bike. So the bike is the best way to work on your knee flexion, to warm up your knee muscles, to reduce stiffness in the knee and to help control pain. To me, the bike is like a must after a knee replacement. You're going to be using it for many, many months after your surgery. This isn't something you'll just have like a, for a week or two and, and then just store it away. And then if you're a desk worker, you can also put it under your desk at work. And that will really, really help with your stiffness, your aching throughout the day, lots of benefits. Um, there are two bikes that I recommend. They're both on Amazon again. The first one is just a foldable bike. It's really cheap. It's easy to set up and it's pretty good. The only issue is it moves really easily. So you have to use like one of those friction mats, um, those sticky mats on the floor, or you have to put it on carpet or put it up against the wall. So most people, when they use this bike, they push it forward with their feet and it causes the bike to kind of shift around. It's really frustrating and annoying to have the bike always moving and then you have to fix it. So you just have to set it up correctly from the get go. Um, and then also you'll need a sturdy, heavy chair while you're biking. So I've witnessed some of my patients pushing on the bike too hard and then their chair starts to tip backwards. So just make sure you have a sturdy chair or you put the chair up against the wall. And then my, uh, the second bike, which is my favorite is called the desk cycle bike. It's quiet, it's sturdy, it's heavy. However, it is pricey, um, but this bike can be put anywhere in your home. It won't risk it moving around really easily and it's really safe to use. So it's a great bike. Um, but now let's move on to some items that are helpful, but not completely necessary. The first one being the leg lifter. So after surgery, 
you will have difficulty lifting your leg into bed because of pain and weakness. I would say like 95% of my patients need some sort of assistance lifting their leg into, um, into the bed after surgery for about three or four weeks. So the leg lifter makes this really, really easy. It's a sturdy, stiff loop. You just wrap it around your foot, use your arms to easily assist your leg into bed. And then the leg lifter can also be used while doing your heel slides in bed. It can help stretch your knee, things like that. I really like the leg lifter, but there are other options if you don't want to spend the money. You can use a belt, you can use a rope tie, a dog leash, a scarf, a towel, anything long enough to reach your foot. The only issue is you'll have to lasso your foot each time. So it can be really frustrating for some people to sit there and continuously try to like wrap this rope around your foot. But that's really the only downside to it. Um, if you have the patience to lasso your foot each time, I would say you don't really need to buy the leg lifter. So Okay, now let's talk about all those pillows that you see on Amazon um, targeting the knee replacement population. There's the knee surgery pillow, then there's like a knee extension pillow, and then there's just like a pillow wedge. So all of them, I really don't like. The knee surgery pillow is shaped incorrectly for somebody after a knee replacement. After surgery, it's so, so important to keep your knees straight. In this pillow, allows you to bend your knee too much. So this pillow is probably for somebody going through like a different type of surgery. For a knee replacement, this is a huge no. And then the other one online is the knee extension pillow. And this one's a huge no as well. This pillow does get your knee very, very straight when you use it correctly. However, I can guarantee you, you will not be able to tolerate your knee resting like that for more than about 30 seconds. It's a really, really intense stretch. So if you were like six weeks in your recovery, then maybe I could see this being really helpful. But overall, I don't like this one. And I think it does more harm than good for people. And unfortunately, people just, they just don't know that. So I really wish they would just remove it from Amazon. But anyways, next type of pillow is the pillow wedge. Um, I'm okay with this one. However, it is not necessary the wedge, it's hard and there's no support um, when your leg is on it. So you'll end up needing to use pillows anyways. And it's also big and bulky. And there's really only one position you can use it in and it's laying on your back. So I always just recommend pillows for my patients. You'll need like a maximum of three pillows. You can arrange them so they're high enough to elevate your leg. You can use soft ones to help support your leg. You can move the pillows around. To sleep on your side pillows are just so much more adaptable after a knee replacement so i would just go with the pillows over buying all the other ones on amazon and then another thing that is popping up on amazon are those knee gliders so this is a great concept however it's a little expensive in my opinion the purpose of the knee glider is to allow you to bend and straighten your knee really easily so you can do your heel sides and just like your knee bending stretches However, you can easily get a um, cheap skateboard or you can use a paper plate on carpet or a towel on the hardwood floor. There are so many ways you can do this without having to spend money on a knee glider. However, I'm not opposed to trying it and seeing if you like it. So if you want to try it, go for it. And then I know there's probably so many other products you might be wondering about. So please just shoot me a message below in the comments or join my Facebook group. I can answer questions in there as well. I'm on there every day. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again.